What's up, everyone? It is time to make a fool of ourselves once again as we have another pickums coming right up. It's for VCT Champion Soul Playoffs. The group's just wrapped up. Uh, we definitely had some upsets. We definitely had some upsets. Uh, some exciting, some a little devastating. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, really good matches, I feel, all the way throughout groups. Uh, I think we just saw a lot of teams level up, so... I think that's what you want to see at the end of the year. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do a whole lot more reviewing, you know, once the entire tournament is over, just because we're going to have a lot of time during the offseason. Don't worry. So we'll kind of look back what worked, you know, what did teams do, uh, things like that. But for now, we got to look forward. So uh, we actually went through it real quickly uh, just because it wasn't ready in game. The in-game pickups took a little while to update. The timer was there. Uh, so in case you're wondering, it is actually open right now. But we, we did a quick first pass. As soon as the playoff brackets were drawn, we got to watch the draw show on our stream live uh, through the watch party. Uh, I mean, you know, a bunch of regional matchups, which quite frankly, I'm okay with, you know, get get it kind of out of the way in the round of eight, you know, guarantee it. the rules guarantee that you don't have a group rematch until the upper finals, which I think that is good too. Uh, and just in case everyone else is confused, like I was, this is not a new rule. We had this last year as well. So listen, it's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I think it actually just goes to show that it's because we don't have any one region like largely dominating the entire scene right therefore increasing the chances of regional matchups in the quarterfinals you're gonna get it at some point so listen it is what it is but we did a quick pass on the pickums uh, over on vlr you know which is what we used to use which is what a lot of people still use uh but obviously now that it's available in game i'm trying to just go through with that uh but this is what our first pass looked like on vlr now let's go through it this was right after the last match had happened right paper race versus edg uh and i said it's just my first pass things might change let's go through it right now in game and see after a little bit more thought do any of these change for me in case you're wondering and you haven't been able to take part in this i highly recommend doing it at the very least just because there are rewards attached to it so if you're not sure where to find the pickums inside the game you click on esports in case you didn't find it right here on the left side you click on esports this is where you can kind of find out what's going on you can obviously look at the teams and you can see their rosters uh, this has been this overall thing has been live the whole year but then you have pickums in the top right and then you pick it uh, and then it gives you this whole menu now the groups are already closed they're done so you can't take part in that uh but hey you should still be able to at the very least get the spray which is just for participating i've already got it it seems uh but then you know score based rewards uh i mean listen i'm <laughs> i don't think my uh my pickups were that good and i'm still in the top 11 percent so I feel like if you're pretty good about your bracket, even if you didn't do the groups, you might be able to actually make top 50%, right? I'm just saying. Uh, we'll have to take a look at what the points look like. So maybe it's still worth a shot. At the very least, secure yourself that spray just because, you know, this is the only way you're going to be able to get it. Uh, the, the community leaderboard is more like influencer leaderboard. So you're going to see, you know, a bunch of uh, everyone's favorite streamers and co-streamers up here. Nate shot actually doing quite well for himself, but overall, uh, I guess this is why I'm at 11%. I, what did people do for me to be top 11%? Like, I'm confused. Like, you must have had groups that you just didn't get either team correct, right? But I'm trying to figure out, like, what group is there for you to not get a single team correct? I guess group B, if you're a big Sentinels believer... Like, maybe you had Gen G Sentinels, I guess? Wait, no, but... No, but then Sentinels would... Yeah, like, you would have had to have, like, Gen G... You had to be, like, a... An America's and EMEA hater. Are you... I, I, I don't know. I don't understand. I guess Group C, maybe. May, I, but I then you would have had to have faith and talent on top of Vitality, which I feel like was probably rare. I'm just so confused, because I don't know. I, I only got... Yeah. Anyway, uh, for those, uh, if you're confused like I am, we w checked this out yesterday. But basically how this works is um, you can, you have a total of 40 points you can get for each group, or you did in the group stage. Uh, so that's going to be plus 16 if you guess that that team will go into the playoffs, right? And then if you put them in the right spot, you get plus two for each of those. You don't get any large sums for the eliminated teams, but if you guess their positions correctly, you get plus two there as well. So you're, reward, you're rewarded greatly more uh, for guessing who actually moves on to playoffs, which I think is fair. Uh, and then the placement gives you a small little bonus. So 
So this is where it's a little bugged. My UI is bugged. Right, right, right. And this, I was confused again. This is where the, the UI could be bugged a little bit because um, I should have plus 16 and plus 16 because I both had Fnatic and DRX moving on, but I had them in the wrong spot. So that gives me 32. And then I have Crew and Billy Billy Gaming in the correct spot. So that gives me plus two each. So that's plus four. So 32 plus four, 36. So uh, sometimes the UI is a little wrong, but I think the points are correct. So uh, don't worry about that. Your score should be correct. It's just the UI updating being a little bit off. Uh, but yeah, so Group B, obviously Gen G, uh, you know, poor performance in terms of expectation. Uh, I don't think it should take away from the whole year, but obviously right now our focus is on champions where they, they didn't do well. Meanwhile, Heretics and Sentinels both showed up. They came and they conquered. Uh, they came prepared. So big props to them. Uh, Tracy Esports, the big upset of the group stage for sure. Looked great. And we have a great story there as well. That's exciting. Leviathan still clutching it out eventually in the decider match against vitality so they'll be moving on so i get the plus 16 for leviathan right it's the these are the small font is is my guess and the big font is the eventual result uh so then you know i had g2 going on first so that gives me an extra plus two points but i had i try to keep some hopium for paper x uh, it doesn't work out edg uh they show up they i mean they played really well and paper x didn't you it just felt like edg really put the pressure onto paper x after the first map and uh and then paper x just crumbled so that is what it is again we'll talk more detail in some of the matches that passed by especially the pacific teams later but now let's move on to the playoffs so the playoffs just opened up a couple hours ago you click on make picks so what is the rule here it doesn't really say but we're doing this one per match so i guess you just get a set number of points i don't know what the points would be because i am curious could you like get top 50 percent even if you didn't do the group stage but anyway all right drx versus sentinels i honestly this is this might be on paper i think this is the toughest one just because the other ones are all intra regional and there is a bit of a set record so far except for i guess heretics and fanatic which is a little bit iffy uh they haven't actually faced each other since stage one but they faced each other three times in stage one so yeah it, it, i guess that one's a little iffy but yeah they're all intra region or they're yeah they're all intra regional whereas drx sentinels i mean both of them are like on an upswing on a big one at that so i but here's the thing i believe so i believe the reason both of them are on the upswing is both of them went back to the basics and they said all right we got to buckle down we got to focus on the basics we got to make sure our basics are good our fundamentals are strong we have to have faith in that that way we shine because we have good players and then and then you start to put a little bit of meat around the bones uh and if that's the case i i think drx probably looks a bit I mean, they only, you know, they came out in the uh, upper bracket of their groups, so it is going to be in much more convincing fashion. Obviously, Sentinels had a very not convincing opening match against Gen G initially when they were still playing the Cypher Lock. But I got to give it to DRX. I got to give it to DRX. I just hope they don't add any any pressure for themselves. Like, you've already done way more than I think anyone really expected when the roster changes, etc. Pro you've proven yourself more than enough. But I don't think I could blame anyone depending on who they pick. I'm going to pick DRX. I do think they're just, just ever so slightly favored. Thinking about the map pull, though. I mean... DRX probably wants to avoid the Lotus. Right? DRX doesn't mind playing the Ascent. They're not going to mind playing the haven they're not gonna mind playing the abyss uh and i think they probably don't mind playing the bind but you pr and then the sunset probably i mean i don't think you want to play sunset into sentinels but you probably don't mind it so lotus is probably the band for drx whereas sentinels i i mean i i think you have a couple options here uh i mean you could ban the ascent if you wanted uh, which I don't think would be too surprising. Maybe just kind of keep that far back as possible. Maybe you're still cooking up. Do we want to go back to the meta comp? Do we, you know, do we stick with something else? Uh, so, so overall, I think the map it doesn't strongly favor one or the other. Uh, but then it just comes down to it's it's gonna that one's gonna come down to a prep thing. And honestly, to me, between these two teams, it's just whoever upgrades faster in the past couple days. And DRX just had more days, right? And I think you have to give it to them. Whereas I also don't think it's gonna be as easy to read and i don't think there's much to like strongly counter from drx just because i don't think they have that deep of a playbook yet it's it's much more them working on the fundamentals and their own style around it so 
give the uh, give the little thumbs up to DRX. Uh, can we just talk about that, by the way? That it is very funny that I used to be like the biggest DRX hater, which, by the way, it was out of love. But anyway, the story is that I used to be the biggest DRX hater, uh, and then now. I'm a fan of them again. I really am. I, I love what I'm seeing from them. I, I do. I, I love what I'm seeing from them. Buzz Buzz is Buzz is my guy. He's the best. Uh, and I, I hope they... They've already done so much, but I hope they go further. Now, Trace EDG. Listen, Trace has only ever taken two maps away from EDG. Not two matches, two maps. They're like one in five or one in six, something like that. And yes, the one are the two maps that they won they 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 won two zero in one best of three last year uh at the end when they were going through their like three acts of ascension and that was the only time and a lot of things have changed since then trace looked good uh i thought they had a great resurgence i thought they figured out a bit more of how to make sure their star players can shine and but you know don't overheat as much that way you can still keep to some of the macro play that you are well known for within china so i think trace looked pretty good i, I mean kai in that finishing ascent game against leviathan looked incredible right and heibei uh, on the bind had some amazing calls and plays like this team is solid uh and and beyond beyond k was looking pretty solid as well uh this team's pretty solid but i think edg Taking a beating against Paper Ice and Icebox, but being able to come back, had some good calls. You know, the star players are shining. Smoggy just smogs all over them. I, this is still tough. And here's the thing. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Let's say T Trace wins this. I'm okay with being wrong. I'm very happy to accept that it is an insanely great Cinderella story. But that's what it would be. I think it'd be very disingenuous for me to look at this and be like, okay, well, you know what? EDG a little bit shaky against the G2 game. And then, uh, you know, 13-4 like or whatever it was on Icebox against Paper X. But Trace, they got out of first in group. I favor them. I, I'm i fine if you want to have hope on them. Uh, but you also have to accept that that's very strong recency bias. So I, I'm going to pick EDG on this one. G2 versus Lev. This one, this I think is probably the easiest one to call. Leviathan has some crazy high peaks, but G2 is just so solid. Is there a world where Leviathan wins? 100%. I mean, it happened, obviously, in the grand finals of Americas. Uh, it could happen again. I think Leviathan, the peak of the peaks are probably slightly higher. I think they also just have you know, a bit more X factor. This isn't to say that G2 doesn't have any, but when you have a player named Osmos on your roster, like you, you automatically kind of have extra X factor than any other team that you're playing against. So uh, yes, Leviathan strong, but uh, I mean, listen, G2 is just so solid. They are so solid. They're so good. G2 is so solid. Okay, Heretics versus Fnatic. This is the one I thought I might change my mind on. Uh, and I'm still a little torn. I'm still a little torn. I'm a little torn, but I'm going to bank on the fact I think Heretics is currently in the swing of, hey, we fixed a couple of those, you know, small things that were really weighing us down, whether it's outside of the game or inside of the game, probably a mix of both, uh, and they're continuing to improve, right? They're already in the upswing, whereas I think Fnatic, I think the loss to DRX should, should have been a very strong reminder on... What do we need to make sure to go far in this tournament, right? What do we need to make sure that we can be, you know, one of the best again in the world? Uh, and I'm just going to put a little bit of faith. I think if they played each other entirely identical in their group stage performances, I probably Heretics wins this one. But this one's this one's the one where I actually think I'm putting maybe a bit more hopium than the DRX Sentinels game, where I'm going to say I have faith that Fnatic is going to come more improved. I, I mean, Heretics looked good. Heretics looked solid. And, and if I don't change this one, maybe nothing changes. This one's a toughie. All right, let's 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 think about it. All right, DRX EDG. Listen, at this point, DRX has to. They have to. If there's, if there's anything DRX is good at, if there's anything the DRX coaching staff is really good at, it's understanding how to punish star players. This has always been their go-to. That's been one of their biggest strengths. Now, EDG has more than one. 
that's a bit of the problem. But uh, and by the way, I think EDG has evolved actually a lot coming into the coming into champions. I think they've they've realized that they want to maintain their color of a little bit of you know a lot of a little bit of aggression. I say little, but a lot of aggression. But making sure that they're still working the map a little bit, making sure that it's not just one guy. You know, you can still invest to set up for Kong Kong, but you have to have backup plans on who else can fire up. I, I mean, they, they've definitely added some layers. So it's not because I think this is an easy, you know, EDG no way beats DRX. I just have faith in DRX. They're looking good. Let's go. Uh, G2 versus Fnatic. In all honesty, this might be, this might be where I change it. I think if Fnatic, here's the thing, is I, hmm. I actually think Heretics is the toughest matchup for a Fnatic on, in this side of the bracket, in the upper bracket. By the way, I know this looks weird, but it's because they need it all in one screen. This is, this part is where the lower bracket starts, right? This is the lower bracket. This is the upper bracket. I, I think Heretics is the toughest matchup out of the three teams on their side. So with that logic, if they beat Heretics, you should be picking them to go all the way. But, and then it would be a rematch. But looking at it now, I'm gonna give it to G2. I think this is what I changed. I'm gonna give it to G2. I'm gonna give it to G2. I think Heretics is the toughest matchup, but I, I have faith that Fnatic will overcome that. But I think G2 comes out swinging against Fnatic. Yep. And then uh let's let's hold off on this one. Sentinels versus Trace. I think Sentinels is able to overcome it. I think Trace you you lose TDG, you're a bit broken. Sure you're there's still going to be a fire. I don't think it's an easy match for Sentinels. But listen, the Cinderella story was great. But we have a greater Cinderella story and the comeback story of Sentinels. <laughs> the plot armor is too thick. Uh, and I also just think Sentinels looked very rejuvenated. And I think that should count for something. I think the DRX one, even if DRX wins, would be a very close match as well. Leviathan versus Heretics. Uh, I, it's just... I, th this side of the bracket is actually really rough for Leviathan. Let me just say that. Like, you are playing against probably the sturdiest teams out of the eight <laughs> on this side of the bracket. So, no matter what happens, that is rough. Uh, but, again, I think Heretics is favored for sure in this matchup against Leviathan. It's not that Leviathan can't win. It's just that the needle is definitely on this side. Just by how much is a different question. On that note, Fnatic versus Sentinels. As much as the plot armor could be incredible, I think... This is where you start to run out a little bit in the depth the depth department i mean i think i think basically starting from here right like these matches it's really about having a 100 percent accurate read on the map draft because you need to be efficient with your time to prep uh, and obviously you would have done a lot of it in these couple days but there's only so much limited time but with that note i'm gonna favor fanatic and then edg heretics it ha it's got to be just <laughs> which means they meet again <laughs> which means they meet again but i i gotta give heretics to edg now let's okay let's figure this out drx versus g2 i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it chat i gotta go all in and here's why i'm gonna do it if there's anybody anywhere in the world that understands how to play just textbook valorant just buy the book it's termy love him or hate him this is like he wrote that book all right he's that teacher he's that professor that wrote that and g2 is now the star student well i guess and then jonah became a another professor himself two generations have passed but termy still wrote that book and it's still being used he didn't actually write the current version of the book. G2 has definitely expanded on it. But that's like an... It's the extra version. The baseline of the textbook hasn't changed. Now, I'm just saying, the coaching staff of DRX knows exactly the strengths and weakness of this. Now, the players still have a lot to catch up on. I I think that's true. Listen, I think this we're only looking at the very beginning of this roster. Not just time-wise, but skill-wise. I think there's so much room left for them to grow. But 
the coaching staff is going to know what to prepare against this style against a team that's very good at anti that has really strong fundamentals that is patient that plays for just that that plays for the win right instead of just like taking risks um and to the point where sometimes g2 could afford to take more risks i think to to win more confidently and i think drx knows exactly what that feels like and they have players who are willing to take those risks right now so i'm just gonna say i think style wise drx is favored in this prep which is insane i can't believe i'm doing this but i, I the bracket the bracket's not helping me the bracket's not helping me. If they beat Sentinels, I think they go all the way to the Grand Finals. In which case, Fnatic versus Heretics, at this point, I don't even know. This is probably a coin flip at this point. You guys just played each other like four days ago. Never mind, that's a lie. A week ago, because there's a couple days break coming into, coming into these three matches. But, yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 is it the rule of the rematch? Is that what we have to do? Heretics, the rule of the rematch, they, they come back and they, they clap back, probably, I guess. But then again, I mean, Fnatic, they lose and then they're still coming back up. So is there any growth in them? Maybe. Maybe. But I, I think at this point that maybe this is where the timeline warps a lot. And then Heretics wins, which means it's G2 versus Heretics. Oh, gosh. I don't even know. And a best of five between these two teams? But but Heretics is the team out of these two that would take the risk to win. I, I, yep, I'm going to do it. And guess what? I love Benji Fishy. You know, I love Woot. I love the entire team. I love what they're doing with it. I like what the coaching staff is doing with it. I love the vision. I believe in it. You know, um, I love all the Heretics fans out there, but somebody's got to experience heartbreak and it's not on me that you have to experience it twice in one year. This is insane. I can't believe I'm doing this. The wrath of the DRX fans, if this is what causes everything to fall apart. I can already see it, but <laughs> you can't blame me though. If I have them beating Sen, surely they've, I mean, right? I I, mean, I guess you could blame me maybe for this one. And I, 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 but you can't. No, you can't. My reasons are not flawed. It's actually insane. I think it's insane, but the bracket is telling me that this is what's going to happen. Okay. I, I, no, it's insane though. I can't submit this. I can't. But I can. But I can. And I will. I. Here's the thing is that I, I will say this. I actually think this is entirely possible, but I will say this. The biggest opponent for DRX at this point is going to be, uh, is going to be if you can stick it out all the way to the end, both the staff and the players. Uh, and I think that's a grueling, it's a grueling requirement for any team. Uh, and for a team that is still developing their own new style, uh, and you know, with a bunch of people who aren't experienced, I think that's rough. I think that's rough. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the tough part about a bracket like this. Uh, we have some great teams. I think we, um, by the way, I think we have a great balance of teams, right? We got a couple people, you know, we got a couple teams that are kind of like, well, okay, Trace is like the big underdog that has now injected the underdog hopium into the bracket. And then you have, I would argue, like DRX and Sentinels are both teams that, you know, people were a little shaky on, on where do we rate them? I mean, DRX obviously very confidently on an upswing, but it was so recent uh, and it's such a young roster. And then meanwhile, Sentinels like, oh, they've been down in the dumps for a little while uh, and now, but they look rejuvenated. I mean, they beat Gen G very confidently in my opinion. Uh, and say what you will about Gen G's performance, but I think credit is you know due where where it is. And then I, Heretics a little bit of that upswing as well. Then you've got some, you know, you've got some strong teams that people expected to be in the playoffs go pretty far, right? Fnatic, Lev, uh, you know, a couple people who are who would be in the conversations for favorites like G2. Uh, so I think this is a pretty interesting bracket uh, of teams. 
out of these eight teams, who do I think are are my kind of favorite teams? And we'll try to do only three teams, right? If I'm only looking at three teams that... I, oh, that's tough, actually. If I'm only looking at three teams, though, I would say... I mean, G2 has to be... <sighs> G2 is a tough one. I'm, like, so confident that G2 is top three. But it's so, it's so hard for me to pick if they would be top two. You know what I mean? I'm, like, confident whatever happens, G2 should be a top three team. In any bracket, but it's hard for me to confidently say that they are top two. Just that that mm, that oomph that oomph is missing. That x that that extra x factor. And again, well, th I'm not using x factor here as in like, well, they don't have a star player. No, I think I think a couple of their players can become the star players, but it, they do they don't take that risk frequently enough to be convincing enough. Ah, it's a tough one. But okay, let's... If I were to pick three teams, not four... I mean, I think it would be this, which I think goes in line with my power rankings coming into the tournament, right? I think it would be these. Um, But I would say... <sighs> Listen, I think, I think I would pick these three as my converse, main baseline conversation for, for favorites to win it. But there would be an asterisk for these two right uh that's how i would do it that's how i would do it yeah which makes sense and then i would have three groups right i would have these three i would have these two and then unfortunately i would have the other three that doesn't mean i don't think they can win i just think they're there's less for me to rely on i guess edg maybe goes into this group depending but that their resurgence is against paper x which is i mean great for them it's a rivalry that wasn't a rivalry before but now they're making it a rivalry so good on them but uh, yeah i don't know about that yeah i'm okay with this i'm okay with this going out into the internet but I, the more I look at this, I can't believe I'm doing it. I can't believe I'm doing it. I, the guy last year who was who was molding in DRX and during the off season, I can't believe I'm doing it. Um, but I'm doing it, and uh, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. This is my pickums. So I think there's actually quite a few things here that people could argue about that I could be wrong about. I especially with you know hype and hopium involved for sure, but. You think I'm wrong? Let me know down in the comments below. You think I'm right? Also, let me know down in the comments below. And also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the uh, channel because we do still have a Pacific team. I, there's only one, but there is one. So the whole What Would Chobra Do series hasn't ended yet. So we will be putting up a video tomorrow uh, for GRX and Sentinels, talking about Sentinels. You know, what do they do differently against Gen G? We'll, we'll dig into that a little bit uh, to see how we think GRX can win that match. Of course, that means uh, our watch parties will probably become less frequent as well. So stay tuned. But we will definitely be live for the watch party for DRX vs. Sentinels on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. You can watch that both here on YouTube and on Twitch. That's going to be it for me. I, I'm pretty happy with my bracket. All right? I'm pretty happy with my bracket. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all on the watch party for DRX vs. Sentinels on Wednesday on the 14th. See you then.